Hey everyone, and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey, and today we're going to be doing part 2 of my Windows on Steam Deck guide. If you haven't done part 1 yet, head back and do that to catch up. In this guide, we're going to be installing Playnight as our front end to automatically boot into when starting Windows. And it's also going to organize and launch all of our games from all the storefronts and emulators. To get an idea of what this looks like, I'm showing it on screen. This is the default theme for Playnight, but there's tons available. I mentioned it in my last video, but you can have a PS5, Xbox, or even a Switch theme that look and feel awesome. Let's start. Before we install Playnight, install your storefront or wherever your games are. So Steam, EA, GOG, Epic, or whatever you want. It's just easier if you do this now. I'm not going to show me installing Steam and all of that on Windows. I assume that you're pretty familiar at this point with how to install Steam and games, so nothing new with this process, this is just straight Windows. But we do need to talk about Steam. You have options when it comes to Steam, given how Steam Deck Tools interacts with it, and this could cause headaches. You might see a pop-up like what I'm showing on screen, and I'll also have a link in the description to this section in the Windows Written Guide. There's three options. You can choose to have the Steam Deck act as an Xbox 360 controller for Steam. This is the option I use and it has the most compatibility without causing issues. The second option is using Steam input with Steam, which will use Steam controls but involves doing a lot more configuration. The last option is ignore Steam, and I personally don't know why you would, but it's there. Like I said, Click the help button or read the written guide to decide what's best for you. If you don't know, choose the first option. It's the easiest and breaks nothing. Once that's all done and you have some games installed from each service, or no games at all if you want, we can move on. Head to playnight.link or the link in the description. Click the green download button and click options. Select portable and I'm going to put mine in the C drive. Just select the C drive and it'll create the folder. You're good to go. Click install. Once it's loaded, click next. And now this is where we can connect Playnight to any service that you have games on. I'll be showing Steam and Xbox Game Pass, but honestly, the steps are basically the same for all of them. You can also choose not to do this if you don't want to, for whatever reason. For each integration, just click Connect Account and then Authenticate. The other settings are up to you. If you click Import Not Install Games, it's going to show your entire library in Playnight, so up to you if you want that. Once you're done with all the integrations, you'll be brought to Playnight's desktop mode. This is important, as Playnight has two modes, desktop and full screen. Full screen is the console-like interface that I showed earlier, where all your games are easily launchable using a controller. This mode here is more for changing settings and doing extra things on the back end. You should see an update at the top saying importing games from your services and you'll start to see your games populate on the left side. Once it's done importing everything, which the top bar will just disappear, let's just take a quick look at how everything shows up. Click the controller icon on the top left, and click switch to full screen mode. Steam Deck tools should automatically switch to Xbox 360 controls, and now you can just move around using your controller to see how the interface looks like. Push the Windows button on the Steam Deck, or right click the controller icon top right and click switch to desktop mode. The next part is optional, but for Game Pass users, let's get those games to show as a catalog. Head to the controller top left, Add-ons, and then under the Browse header, click Generic. Find Game Pass Catalog Browser and install. Click Save and Yes to restart.
Now, on the left, you should see an Xbox icon. Head to that and it's going to update your catalog. It'll take a minute or two. Once that's done, you'll see the entire Game Pass catalog. These will not show in full screen mode, it's just a shortcut to the store. So click on a game you want and then click Add to Playnight Library. Once you do, it'll show in your library on the left. So now you see Dead Cells, which is the game I chose from Game Pass, but it's grayed out, meaning it's not installed. If you click Install, it'll take you to the Microsoft Store and you can just install it. Let's change some Playnight settings. Head to the controller top left, then Settings, and click Minimize Playnight to System Tray. Also, click Launch in full screen mode and launch Playnight when you start your computer. This will make it so when you start the Steam Deck, it goes right into full screen mode so you get a console like experience. For Steam users, if you click the Auto Close Client section, it gives you the option to automatically close Steam when you close a game that was running it. Since I don't personally have Steam booting up on startup, and I don't want Steam running in the background if it's not being used, I selected this option. Before we talk about emulators, a question you likely have is how do you add games that are not part of a service? And I'm not going to ask questions about where you got them. Head to the controller icon in the top left, add game, scan automatically. Click scan folder and navigate to the game folder and select that folder. Playnight will search for executables in that folder. Select the correct one and then click add games. If the thumbnail, title and information are wrong after, just keep watching. I'll talk about how to fix that a little bit later on near the end of the emulator talk. Okay, let's talk about emulators. I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but we have Windows, meaning there's thousands if not hundreds of thousands of guides for installing and configuring emulators. I'm not going to be showing the full process, instead I'm going to put links in my description to guides for the more popular options. However, I will talk about important changes to each emulator and a very big important thing you need to know. So let's start with that. Now, if you recall, I said that all games and emulators are going to recognize the Steam Deck as an Xbox 360 controller, as long as you chose the option I recommended earlier. This is half true. Without a game open, you are almost always in desktop mode, and when you're not in a game or emulator, you can change that by right clicking on the taskbar where the screen or controller icon is, and changing between desktop and Xbox 360. This is important, as when you're ready to set up controls for any of the emulators you're going to install, you want to change this to Xbox 360 before opening the emulator. Let me show you an example. If I open Dolphin in desktop mode and go to try and configure the controller, it shows as disconnected. Only because I've actually configured it before, but if this was a new install, it actually wouldn't show that controller for the first time. And so if you tried to map the controller right now, it would think you're using a keyboard and mouse. Let's close out and change it to Xbox 360 and come back in. And now you're going to see that X input is correctly shown and even another controller option. Just use X input. But the point is that you want to have Xbox 360 selected before you open the emulator to configure controls. So remember to do this while setting up all your emulators. Now you're probably freaking out and saying what? I have to do this for all my games before running them? And the answer is no. For regular games, when you load them in, if you push and hold the three dots, you get our menu with all of our settings. At the very bottom it says controller. If you navigate to it with the d-pad and push left or right, you can change between Xbox 360 and desktop. Since power control saves per app configurations, you only have to do this once. A lot of games will just automatically set it, but some you need to change it and so you only do this once and never again. Okay, as promised, let me talk about emulator specific settings that you should change for a better experience with Playnight. The main thing you want to do is make sure you add your ROMs as a directory for every single emulator you can. So make sure the emulator actually has an idea where your ROMs are. Then, for pretty much all of them, just enable full screen and configure the controller settings. Xenia's full screen is in its config file, for example. The rest will be personal preference for settings. 
For almost all of them, you'll want to disable the confirm on exit option, or you'll start to get annoying pop-ups when you're trying to exit the emulator. I would also disable check for updates on start, which also gets annoying. There's not much else to say. Like I said, just read or watch the guides for each emulator and change things as you go. There's no need to overcomplicate things. Now that we have our emulators set up and we have games showing inside of them, how do we get those games into Play Night? Okay, so head to Play Night's desktop mode and then click the controller icon, library, and configure emulators. Click import at the bottom and then scan folder. And navigate to the emulator you want to add. I'm going to do Xenia. Select folder and click import. And then click save at the bottom. So you'll want to repeat this process for all of your emulators, just add them in. So now Playknight knows what emulator to use for that type of game. Let's get the games in. So click the controller icon, add game, and then emulate a game. Then click add scanner and you want to change the following fields. Scan with emulator. So choose the emulator. For me, it's going to be Xenia. Profile. Usually there's only one profile and so it's Canary for mine. But for RetroArch, you're going to see cores that you're using. And then click the scan folder icon and find your ROMs for that emulator. So for me, it's the Xbox 360 directory. Last thing we want to do is have this automatically search for new games if we add them. So click save as auto scan configuration and name it. I chose Xbox 360. Let it scan and it's going to take a while for some of the disk based games. Once done, you'll get a screen like mine and then you can just click import. You should see the games in your library now. One last step to do, we have the emulator set up, we have the games linked to that emulator for Playnight to launch. Let's get them to show as their own category in Playnight's full screen. Click the filter icon at the top, it looks like a funnel, and now you'll see on the right a whole bunch of options to filter your library. Head to platform and choose the platform you want to filter. So Xbox 360 for me. I only have the one game installed right now, but my entire library just got filtered by Xbox 360 games. Now head to the save icon on the right and click that, and set a name. I'll choose Xbox 360, and make sure to select the second checkbox to show as a quick filter. So what did that do? Let's jump back into full screen mode, and let's ignore the fact that I was running the Switch theme during this recording. But you can see the Xbox 360 icon and filter at the bottom that we can select into and only see Xbox 360 games. If you remember me showing it at the very beginning, you would have seen all of my emulators at the top as little tabs. So PS1, GameCube, whatever it is. And so you can repeat the same process for all your emulators and games. Now, a question you're likely going to have is some of your games are missing the thumbnails or the right title information, almost everything. An easy way to see this is in desktop mode. If you click the grid icon at the top, your library will now show in thumbnails. You can see Rhythm Paradise Mega Mix is missing. So let's right click and then click edit. Then click download metadata at the bottom and click the IGDB option. Now this acts like a search. It's wonky sometimes. For example, Pokemon needs that accented E to be found. But in this case, the option I need is on screen. So just click it and choose select. It'll ask about importing that data and select. Then click save. And now we have a thumbnail. Perfect. And that's basically it. Now you know how to do basically everything. If you want to change your theme, Head to the Playnight forums and their theme section for full screen, or the link in my description. And you can browse what's available for install. They can be installed directly from Playnight when you find one you like. Just go to desktop mode, the controller icon, add-ons, 
Browse section and themes full screen. There's also a ton of extensions you can install too. Like the how long to beat extension, which will basically show you how long it takes to beat a game, or even success story for achievements, so it'll show retro achievements or even Steam achievements on that page, and a bunch more. You can go down a very big rabbit hole with Play Night. But for everyone else, you should have a perfect Windows setup now. Enjoy your games. For anything more, like I said before, the Windows on Deck subreddit is great or their Discord is perfect as well. And they're great for resources for questions and more improvements. So check those out. Also, Bald Sea Lion's Great Windows Guide, which I've linked in the description, is a great option as well in case there's any updates. And that's going to be it for this one. Hope you liked the video and hope you all have a good one.